Indie games are some of my favorite things to cover for the channel, both for my unconditional love for this side of the industry with all of its passion and creativity, as well as the fact that I get the chance to introduce some of you to an interesting game you may not have known about. And today is a very special day, because I'd like to present to you all Team 7 Star's Code Bunny, a 2D action platformer released September of last year that's inspired by the Mega Man Zero and ZX series, Gun Vault, and even Sonic the Hedgehog, as well as the first ever game I get to say I got a review copy for. One of the game's writers, Violetta Volnut, actually reached out to me after watching a previous video of mine and asked if I was interested in reviewing Code Bunny, and with it looking right at home for this channel as well as being such a cool opportunity, how could I say no? And having played Code Bunny for myself, I gotta say, while I'm definitely a little biased here, it is a really good time, with it being a pretty satisfying, albeit short, experience whose story I actually kinda resonated with for some surprising reasons. So join me while I try and convince all of you to give Code Bunny the chance it deserves. But before that, I do want to assure you real fast that despite my obvious bias, I am going to be fair with this review. I wouldn't exactly be doing right by the devs here if I only said what I enjoyed about the game without acknowledging any criticisms I might have, after all. Our story takes place in a world inhabited by rabbit people called Planet Lumna in the year 2090. For hundreds of years, the planet's people have been trying to harness the power of Aether, an energy produced by the comet Iliaster. While recent technological advancements have allowed them to do just that, the Xanadu government wants to go above and beyond by harnessing the comet's power directly, so with the help of Lagos Hyperbolics, they establish the VY Space Program. This is where we get to our two protagonists, Hazel, a warrior for Xanadu's army, and Axel, a former ice skater turned member of Lagos's VY unit, both of whom find themselves pursuing a terrorist group called Mad Bunny after they attacked Lumen City, who for unknown reasons also aren't exactly the biggest fans of Lagos' hyperbolics. The structure of Code Bunny's story is similar to something like Mega Man X4 or Azure Striker Gun Vault 2, in that both characters have their own separate campaigns. And while the levels you go through are mostly the same, each one tells a different side to the story. And let me tell you, both Hazel and Axel's campaigns go places I never expected going into this game. Like, there was a moment in Hazel's story that genuinely caught me off guard for all of the best reasons, and that's not even talking about some of the game's themes. Most of them I can't really talk about due to spoilers, but at the very least, I do want to say how much I really appreciate how Code Bunny talks about the past and moving forward. I won't say too much about it for previously stated reasons, but as someone who's struggled with this sort of thing in recent years, I really appreciate how Team 7 Star handled this topic. If I had any complaints though, I do wish there was a bit more story here, with my biggest reason being how much I liked the characters. Hazel, Axel, and their team are all just really likable and interesting people, and I really enjoyed their interactions with each of the three talk rooms you can watch after every stage. Admittedly though, it's also because I'd love to see them explore some of the game's themes in a bit more depth, and this would also mean I'd have more levels to play, but a bit more on that later. Before we move on to the gameplay though, I want to really quickly praise the presentation. All of the sprites, backgrounds, and set pieces look very good, with Wonderland being my favorite stage in the game visually, and the animations for Hazel and Axel all look very smooth and fluid, especially when Hazel uses her Ghost Crescent. In regards to the game's music though, if you're a fan of classic Mega Man soundtrack or really just chiptune music in general, Code Bunny won't disappoint you at all, because the music's definitely just as good if not better than its visuals, with songs like Revolution Bunny and Wondrous Luster being two of my favorite songs in the game. With all of that being said though, the actual gameplay for Code Bunny is structured like a more linear version of something like Azure Striker Gun Vault, with you progressing through each stage in a set order. Each one will also give you a ranking based on how fast you got to the end as well as how high of a combo you got, with things like whether you died or got hit at all further contributing to your rank. The biggest difference between Code Bunny and Gun Vault though is that there's no upgrades of any kind here. Your arsenal at the start is what you have at the end of the game, so the challenge and difficulty is based purely on your own skill. This brings us right to Hazel and Axel, who both play completely differently from each other. Starting with Hazel, she has a four-hit combo with her sword for basic attacks as well as a parry and counter that, thankfully for me, is pretty generous with its timing. Her most important tool, though, is her Ghost Crescent. She can target up to three enemies or objects by hitting them with an arrow, which you can then warp to and slash in the order you targeted them, with the Ghost Crescent also giving you an extra jump after the attack for platforming. There are three other things to keep in mind with Hazel, though, and they all center around her Karma Gauge. Every time you hit an enemy or parry an attack, you'll get one Karma for your combo, and after the timer for the combo runs out, your Karma Gauge will increase based on how high it was, with you losing some of the gauge when you get hit or when you use the Ghost Crescent. The Karma Gauge increases the damage for the Ghost Crescent based on how high it is, but it'll also protect you from death so long as you're not on 1 HP with Hazel's Shatter Point. 
Hazel will also take more damage based on how high the karma gauge is, but with the way karma gain and loss works, I rarely noticed it. But let me tell you, when it is noticeable, it's no joke. A full gauge can easily have you brought to 1 HP by a single attack if you're not careful. With all that being said though, I feel like the best way to describe her playstyle is that Hazel's simple to learn but tricky to master. If you just care about getting to the end of the game, her campaign can definitely pose a challenge, but it's not anything too bad at all. If you're wanting to get the best rank possible though, that's a different story. Mastering her moveset and learning how to get the most out of it will be absolutely essential for getting an S plus rank on stages. And while I wasn't good enough to get that outside of bosses, trying to get the best rank that I could achieve was pretty satisfying. Replaying each stage and memorizing the placement of enemies as well as objects to know when to use the Ghost Crescent for maximizing both speed and combo gain all while mastering Hazel's moveset was very fun. And it helps that each stage is very well designed and fairly short, so it makes replaying each stage fun every time without it taking much time at all. With my favorite ones being her stage 4, Lagos Hyperbolics, and Wonderland. Lagos Hyperbolics was the stage I had the most fun learning for Hazel. Memorizing the placements for all of the ships and enemies to effectively use my Ghost Crescent made for an incredibly satisfying experience when it finally all came together after 15 to 20 minutes of replaying it to raise my rank from a C all the way to an A. Wonderland has a fun mechanic in these color-coded teleportation top hats, and effectively using the physics for them plays a big part in whether you get a high ranking or not. This stage also has by far the hardest boss from my experience, with it having taken me around 15 minutes to beat them the first time in story mode, a number I've since gotten down to 2 minutes. All in all, Hazel is an incredibly fun character to play as, who also has a very simple to learn but tricky and satisfying to master moveset, which helps make her stages really enjoyable to replay and try to get the best ranking for. Then we have Axel, who, while fun to play as, is basically this game's easy mode. Before we get to that though, let's start with how Axel plays, because as I've mentioned before, he's completely different from Hazel. Axel's being a former ice skater plays a big part in his gameplay, both in how much faster he moves and the way he fights. For his basic attacks, he has a three-hit combo with his legs as well as a spin dash for attacking and platforming, as well as a stomp that does damage and lets you bounce off of enemies. Now, unlike Hazel and her Karma Gauge, Axel's EX Gauge is a lot easier to fill, with it going up every time you hit an enemy with a spin dash or stomp. While Axel's EX Gauge can let you use a few different EX moves when it's full, the biggest draw for me, and what I primarily used it for, is its ability to prevent damage. Cause let me tell you, this is pretty OP. See, Axel's gauge increases by a third every time he spin dashes or stomps an enemy, and when Axel gets hit, he loses a third of the gauge in exchange to avoid taking damage. And I'm of two different minds on this. Axel as a character is faster than Hazel and very momentum-based. You'll be constantly spin dashing and bouncing off of enemies to get the best time possible. Having some way of protecting him from damage I think is a pretty good idea, since otherwise it gives you much less room for error when playing as him. On the other hand though, it does snap the difficulty for boss fights in half because of how easily you can increase the EX gauge with the spin dash. I mean, I won't lie, there's absolutely a wonderful simple joy in being an ice skating bunny Beyblade of death, but it almost feels like I'm cheating it makes fights so easy. Easy. Besides that though, I don't really have any problems with Axel's playstyle at all, and I love how unique he is for a game like this. I really love the usage of momentum and bouncing off of enemies in the level design, but this does bring me to my biggest criticism overall for the game. Code Bunny, while a great game, is very short. Each character only has six stages, and while what we do have is definitely good and I enjoyed replaying them, I couldn't help but leave the game wanting a little bit more because of how much fun I had. Now thankfully though, the devs have confirmed that they fully intend on adding more content to the game in the future, and while we don't know what that'll be exactly, it does mean that with time this won't actually be an issue anymore. Look, when I tell you that I think Code Bunny is a great game and I totally recommend it, I'm not just saying that because one of the devs reached out to me about reviewing it. I genuinely mean every bit of what I'm saying. Code Bunny really is a great time, with it having really fun and satisfying gameplay for those that enjoy things like Gun Vault or even Freedom Planet. Its story is also surprisingly thematically interesting, and while it's a bit short at the moment, I think the game's definitely worth its $10 asking price. If I've managed to catch your interest at all, Code Bunny's currently only on itch.io, complete with a demo for you to try out, but they do fully intend on getting the game a Steam page at some point in the future. Before we end things off though, I want to quickly thank Violetta Volnut. This was such a cool opportunity for me, and I hope this review ends up sending some love towards your team's way. From what I've seen with Code Bunny, Team 7th Star is a pretty talented bunch, and I'd love to see what you all create in the future. Thank you all for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have a nice day.